All right, I have my 8 inch by 8 inch by 150 pixels per inch assets file. I've brought in what's called my hero element, which is my cat, but my cat does not have eyes or pupils. Instead, I have those as separate elements that I can maneuver. To make them really effective as an asset, I'm going to move all those eyes, both the, the glistening shape that's going to stay put and the pupil that's going to move. I'm going to put them all into their own group. So I'm going to select all four, then click on the little folder icon. And I'm going to call this the cat's eyes. Very simple. Now, this is, this is where assets, this is how assets work that doesn't make a lot of sense. But it's very helpful in animation. We're not going to hand draw everything. We're going to save time by having the computer make perfect copies and then modify. So instead of modifying the cat's eyes here, I'm going to do Command J and duplicate that entire folder. So I have now cat's eyes copies. I'm going to turn off the one before, and now I'm going to move the things I want to move. So I'm going to select both of these eyes. I'm going to hold down Command and select both of them at once, right? And what's the movement of the eyes? It's going to start looking to the left, right? So I'm just going to use my arrow keys, and I'm going to move them this way. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of the whole folder, Command J. Then I'm going to turn off the one behind it. I'm going to select these two. That's why they're red. And I'm going to use my arrow keys, and I'm going to move them about halfway, like that. Then I'm going to make a duplicate. And then I'm going to turn off the original, select the eyes. Move them that way. Because now they're following the fish. And that's going to be different looking than this. You see how the eye position is just slightly different. Even if it was the same, it's just easier to make duplicates. Do it again. Come on, open up for me. And I'm going to move them about halfway to the other side. Then make a duplicate, Command J. Glitching on me a little bit. And lastly, I'm going to move them back to here. Now, this is what's called a movement cycle. So I have the full range of movement now that I want for the cat's eyes, all captured in assets. So how do they move? Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. That's all of those assets turned on. So you get a full range of movement. So it starts there, then it moves, then it comes back. I'm going to cancel. Don't install software. OK. So how can I clean this up memory-wise? Because remember, it's only the pupils that are moving. I actually don't need any of these yellows. What I can do is move these yellows, which are the highlights, push them up and to the top. So they're floating and always on for the eyes. And then all of these, I can delete the yellows. Save a lot of memory. So this is cleaning up your assets, understanding what you need, what you have, what you're going to be manipulating. It's why it's our final compositing project, because it has so much to do with understanding your layers, merging things together. OK, now what I'm going to do 
is put all of this into a folder. All the I stuff. I'm just going to call it eyes. So that folder can be turned off and on. And within it, I'm always going to have these on. In fact, I can, even though they have effects on them, I should be able to merge them. Yep, so it's just one layer. Those are the highlights. They're all still vector shapes. Why not? They don't need to still be vector shapes, but I don't need to rasterize them. And the hard thing I try to remind myself of, I don't need to make it more complicated than this. <laughs> you know? So I have an eye movement kind of built in. And I've got a full range. So let me show you how we can animate with this. I've got some basic assets. My first introdu introduction is just to the cat. And then the cat's eyes move and a fish is coming in. But I can do a lot more than two frames if I, if I think about it in the right way. So I'm going to start with Let's see, this, yep, okay, I'm going to start with this, and then I'm actually going to turn off my cat, so I just have these floating disks on this background. And then I'm actually going to turn off the eyes entirely. And this is going to be the first frame that I use. And this is how I do it. I'm going to click on the top here. Oh, first of all, maybe I want to fade out this background. I haven't played with it much. But let's take the opacity down, or let's play with a blending mode, like pin light maybe, or soft light, or screen. You know what? I like just normal the best. So I'm going to do it at like a 75% opacity. That's going to be my background. This is my first frame. It requires both of these layers to give me that image. I am going to say file export as a JPEG. Save. Go to downloads, move this into my folder, and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename that first frame, and I'm going to say stage instead of assets. And then I'm going to open this up in Photopea. Say file open, find it. It's my assignment three and it's my stage. There it is. It's just a JPEG. I'm going to open it up. Right now these two files are identical. Assets and stage. That's my first frame. I am going to rename it and save it as a PSD. So now it is my PSD that is a stage. Right there. And I'm going to mark it with blue. These are the Northeast Lakeview College campus colors, green and blue. Stage I always put on the right. Assets I always put on the left. Then I am going to go to Photopea. I'm going to say open and I'm going to open up that blue PSD stage. Again, they're both identical except this is all flattened. So basically our stage is where our flattened frames are going to go. So what's my next frame? I'm going to have these eyes appear, but maybe I want them to appear first at, let's do steps of five. I'll do steps of four at 25 percent opacity. Okay. There is a couple ways to do this. The safest way 
is the most labor intensive. In PhotoP, it's to click on each layer that's open, or just every layer basically, and then hold down option, say layer, merge layers, and it will make a non-destructive copy of that at the top. And then you select all of that with command A, and then you copy all of it with command C, and then you go over to your stage and you paste it in with command V. So now I have two frames. And then when I come back, I have to delete this. And then I, I have to deselect and delete that layer, right? So that's the, the least destructive, but it, it prevents you from making a horrible mistake. The faster way is to just do this, and I'll do it with the next frame. So in the next frame, I'm going to go up to 50% opacity. So I'm slowly introducing just the eyes right now. 49 is fine. And then I'm just going to go to Layer, Flatten Image, and then select all, Copy, go to my stage, and then Command-V, Paste. But then when I come back, very important, I need to go in my history to before I flatten the image. You see how that's a little bit more dangerous? Because if you lose power after you flatten the image and you hadn't saved, you're, you're out of luck. Okay, so I'm going to use that to kind of speed up, but you can do it either way. It's always a good idea to save after you've brought something to the stage and just command S on either file. Okay, I now have three animation frames. They're not that exciting. It's this, this, then this. But what's so great about the stage is you can see what you have and kind of the timing of it. Okay, now I'm going to bring my eyes to 75%. And then I'm going to say layer, flatten image. There's no shortcut for flatten image, which is good because it's a dangerous thing to do. But the shortcut for selecting all, you can go to select and then say all, but it's just command A. And then the shortcut for copying is command C. You can find it under edit. So command A, command C, and then you click on your stage, and then you click on edit paste, command V, and it will paste it in. And then command S, save it, save your stage, but not your assets, because I'm going to go before I flatten the image, right? And now I'm going to take my eyes up to 100%, and I'm going to flatten it one more time. And I'm going to select all, going to copy, going to paste, going to save, going to go back here, know that I'm in my assets, know I need to go before I flattened it. Now, I'm going to start fading in my cat. I'm going to start at 25%. Layer, flatten image, command A, command C, stage, command V. Now I have six animation frames. Save. Go before I flatten my image. Push my cat's opacity up to 50, giving the most out of these assets by slowly introducing my character without any extra work except for organizing it in this way. Layer, flatten image, Command A, Command C, Command V, save. I might leave out the save on your stage for you so that you don't accidentally save your assets when it's flattened. But just save your stage every once in a while. Now I'm going to take it up to 75% opacity. I'm doing this so I can show you how the animation is going to work. Even though this isn't a very interesting first frame, I'm setting up the first frame. Flatten the image, select all, copy it, and then maybe go right back to before I flattened it, before I go to the stage and paste it in. That might be a little safer. Then you don't need to worry about saving. And then lastly, you know, I actually kind of like it 